Good morning, everybody. This is Marty from Dog's Blog. In the noontime report of the Frank Carson Adolf trial um, on October 23rd, 2018. This is week 27, day court day 92 of this case. Um, court was scheduled um, to start at 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, the jury was not here uh, this morning. They're going to be in this afternoon. They had to take care of some things. And so, of course, the judge was late when that happens. And there was a few things on calendar. Really not a lot happened this morning. Uh, but uh, the judge finally got on the bench around 9.55. Um, there was the, uh, Marlissa Ferrer was here. The attorney general was here. Um, Alonzo Granford, representing Eddie Quintinar, was here. And this is in regard to the pitches motion that had been filed by the district attorney's office for personnel records and the uh, internal affairs investigation of Quintinar. They're doing it both with Quintinar and McFarland. And they were in there for about 20 minutes. Um, uh, Eddie Quintinar was in court today. Uh, Alonzo Granford was uh, appearing for Larry Niemeyer, Scott McFarland's attorney. Scott McFarland was not present. And there were some papers that were filed by the Attorney General. I do not know what they were, but it was probably in opposition to the District Attorney's quest. Uh, and Judge Aniga did deny the DA's motion for the Pitches motion as it was, it was problematic and she's mentioned this in the past. And the paper, with the papers that were filed, there was something wrong with them. Um, and they don't address the issues that are before this court in, the, in, this, in this case. So they, uh, they have to be redone. Judge Aniga noted that uh, Scott McFarland's and Quentin, our statements do not, they did not show how they relate to this case, apparently. The judge also noted that the, the DA has to be careful about any type of Brady information that becomes available in this case, and to which means that she would have to turn over any exculpatory uh, information that may be revealed if it's ever completed. Uh, apparently, his problem was uh, some of the declarations that were made in that briefing that was the papers that were turned in by the DA's office. Uh, she's to offer a new set of papers with the proper declarations. Uh, the hearing has been reset for November 2nd. Former private investigator Jack Abel was also present and was brought into the courtroom and put on the stand. He had his attorney present by the name of Dania. I think, believe his name was David Dania. He was representing Jack Abel and advised the court that Jack Abel was going to take the Fifth, Am <coughs> Fifth Amendment claiming privilege of any information that he could talk about. Jack Abel was put on the stand and Marlissa, they have to be put on the stand and then uh, invoke their Fifth Amendment and then uh, officially on the court. So they have to be sworn in, then swear the fifth. And that's what they did. Marlissa Ferrer asked him. He, she, he got on the stand. She, uh, she says, good morning, Mr. Abel. And he did not respond. Uh, he was obviously not happy to talk to her. And she asked him if she asked him uh, what he did for a living. He says, I take the Fifth Amendment. Uh, she says, are you refusing to answer all questions? He, he says, yes, I am. Under the, he's asserted privilege. And Marlissa Ferrer says she has prepared to offer him immunity and anything that he could testify to. It has, in fact, uh, written what they call a 1324 order to offer that immunity to him. Uh, Judge Inigas says he is asserting privilege and he had a right to insert that privilege and to a hearing, a 4-0 hearing on that privilege. Uh, um, there's a difference between asserting the Fifth Amendment in regards to privilege 
as in privileged information like work product between attorney, private investigator, attorney, client type of thing, and just uh, reserting the Fifth Amendment to not incriminate yourself. So there's a distinction there, and it sounds like that he's just doing it off of privilege. Jack Abel is then taken off the stand, and he'll return at a later date. Um, Abel's attorney, Mr. Denio, did go into chambers for a few minutes with the judge uh, to talk about uh, the immunity issue, uh, but she did repeat that there is an issue of the privilege. He's not claiming self-incrimination, he's claiming privilege. The judge Denio also noted, it's, can an attorney or a private investigator claim privilege when one of those, like the, in this case, Frank Carson, has been charged in the crime, and can he claim the privilege? Has that what he was um, exposed to, what the privileged information he was exposed to, if it's part of a crime, and then he may not have that privilege. And so they're again, they're gonna brief this information. Um, uh, the papers to be in by October 31st, um, and November 16th at 1.30, they're gonna have the hearing um, in regards to this issue and he's scheduled to testify the week of the 27th which uh, November 27th I believe is what uh, she said after we're done with that and we've taken a break uh, Eddie Quentin and Alonzo Bradford came forward and Eddie was put on the stand again also to insert his Fifth Amendment officially before the court. And he was asked when he was employed in 2012, he invoked the Fifth Amendment, uh, and he intends not to respond under his Fifth Amendment rights. <laughs> Alonzo Bradford was making, they were doing, they were discussing the immunity uh, situation and there was an and talking about the uh, the an agreement if ordered by the court or approved by the court Alonzo Granford was making a comment but he wasn't didn't have his microphone turned on and I couldn't hear a thing he was saying um, um Marlissa Ferrer said it's going to be transactional immunity um and there's two types of immunity one's transactional and I just for, just drew drawing a blank on the second one but transactional immunity is they cannot charge him for anything that he testifies truthfully about. Um, the other one, the other type of immunity is if he testifies and we could give, still get, lead them in a direction of an investigation is something that he says on the sand. That's, uh, that's the other type of immunity and I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, I apologize. Uh, but um, apparently they are giving him transactional immunity. So, Marlissa Ferrer, Kurt Bunch, Alonzo Granford, uh, Eddie Quintinar, they go out to the quiet room. Oh, the um, attorney general that was here for this also went out and went to the quiet room outside to discuss the situation. And um, again, uh, they came back in sometime later and um, Judge Duniga signs the immunity uh, agreement and the testimony, his testimony is expected to be the week of the 6th, which I believe will be November 6th. Um, they also had um, an attorney president for, president, present for Praveen Singh. He was told to be here today to do his Fifth Amendment assertion, um, but apparently um, he thought that he was not under obligation to return to court and need to be resubpoenaed. The judge has made that very clear that wasn't true, and his attorney is going to attempt to have him here on tomorrow as he's out of town today. He did not believe he needed to be here today. He thought he was scheduled for a different date. Um, but uh, but he is scheduled to testify, uh, I believe, on Thursday if they actually get to him. So the attorney said that he will try to get Praveen Singh here in the morning if possible. If not, he will be here for Thursday testimony. Um, and 
One last note uh, before we broke up for the morning session that there is a 402 hearing tomorrow, which 402 is, as a reminder, is an evidentiary hearing in regards to the dogs that were used, the Godiver dogs that were used uh, on the property. That hearing is tomorrow morning, and they're trying to get all the information available uh, as it's been a problem in the past, apparently, getting training records and such from, uh, in regards to those dogs that were used. Um, that was it for the morning session. We went to lunch, we're back at 1.30. Uh, the jury is supposed to be back in. We're supposed to be taking to, um, testimony again, and Corey Brown, I believe, is gonna be on the stand, and he should probably be finished uh, this afternoon. Don't forget the podcast tonight at 6 o'clock.